With the recent release of a Firebase Studio, Google has made a bold move into the realm of AI-enhanced development, potentially positioning itself as a competitor to Cursor AI. One of its main features allows you to develop a whole web application by communicating with an AI agent in a human language. So you basically specify all your application requirements, features, color palette, and other important information and just wait until your application is being developed in front of your eyes. It seems that we are entering the era where robots might replace humans. But is that really true? Or is this some kind of advertisement which is made to attract non-developers to their platform? Well, the answer is somewhere in the middle. So be sure to watch this video until the end, because we're gonna analyze all its features, pros and cons, as well as the new Android Studio in the cloud. All right, so uh, the first uh, thing that I should mention here is that uh, this platform is uh, currently in a preview state, which means it's uh, still being developed, right? That practically means that there are probably some more features uh, coming up in the future, plus uh, all existing ones uh, might get an upgrade as well. Besides that, you can also expect a few issues down the road as well, but nevertheless. So uh, we're going to now open up this uh, platform by typing here uh, studio.firebase.google.com. Okay, so there we go. Uh, this is how that uh, platform currently uh, looks like. So at the moment, uh, we can see here uh, what kind of uh, languages uh, this uh, platform currently supports. And uh, the bad thing about it is that uh, we cannot see or find the Kotlin language here. So currently, this uh, platform is uh, not made specifically for uh, mobile development. Or at least uh, if you want to use that uh, feature to allow the AI to build uh, the application for you, uh, then the AI is uh, currently uh, building uh, and prototyping only applications for the web, as far as I know. However, we can use, of course, the Android Studio from the cloud, and uh, that's also another story. So let's first create here uh, the new workspace, okay? Uh, as soon as I click that, then we can see here a bunch of different templates for the uh, web, for the backend, uh, for the mobile. So I will choose the mobile, and this is the Android Studio Cloud. So let's select that environment, and I'm going to name this workspace uh, My uh, Android Studio. As simple as that. Let's click Create button. So I have already tried this um, Android Studio in the cloud, and I'm going to share my uh, personal experience and the reason, or the couple of reasons, why uh, at the moment I'm not planning to use uh, Android Studio in the cloud, because I think that uh, it still uh, lacks uh, a few features, and uh, it's uh, quite slower than I thought. So, okay, so um, here, as you can see, when I try to access this uh, Android Studio from my uh, Mozilla Firefox web browser on a Mac OS, I'm uh, constantly receiving this uh, error that says uh, permission denied. So I'm not actually sure uh, why is that. However, when I try uh, accessing this uh, Android Studio uh, in a Chrome, then it works. So now I will launch the uh, Google Chrome, and we can open up this uh, same thing, so uh, studio firebase.google.com. There it is. So this is the workspace uh, which uh, was created just now. Let's uh, now open up this Android Studio from this uh, Google Chrome web browser. Okay, so there you go. Here uh, somehow it works, so I'm not actually sure what is the reason. Um, I'm going to allow here this uh, permission. Yes, we can send the uh, usage statistics to Google, so we are uh, good Samaritans, right? And let's create here the first project. So I'm going to choose, of course, the empty activity. So it's fine, my application name. Uh, there we go, click Finish. So having your uh, favorite development environment, in this case, uh, Android Studio in the cloud is, uh, is a good thing, but not for everyone. So as I already mentioned uh, earlier, uh, personally, I uh, wouldn't uh, use this uh, Android Studio ID from the cloud, at least at the moment, because, first of all, it's um, drastically slower than the Android Studio on my uh, MacBook. For example, as you can see, when I try to select uh, this uh, text, for example, we can see uh, the clear delay between, uh, uh, between our mouse cursor and those uh, actions that we are doing in our uh, ID. Uh, the good thing about that is that we can actually use this uh, Android Studio in a full screen, so we have this little option to access our uh, Android Studio in the full screen, which is great. We can even uh, maximize this uh, whole window. So with this, you can practically uh, feel the same way as uh, 
with the Android Studio on your own machine, but there are a few uh, drawbacks, like the actual uh, performance of this Android Studio is uh, a lot less than I got used to it. So as you can see, it has uh, some uh, great delay here when we are selecting the code or when we are actually writing some code. So as you can see, so it has some delay when uh, I'm actually typing here. And I really don't like that. So I'm hoping that they will increase the overall performance of, uh, of this Android Studio ID in the cloud in the future. And the second thing that I don't like about this uh, Android Studio in the cloud is uh, the shortcuts. So for example, if I now want to copy some of this uh, code from here, so let's say that I select it and I want to press here a shortcut uh, Command plus C. So when I press that, you will see that the shortcut will uh, bring me uh, this uh, code drop-down menu, okay? So it doesn't work uh, the same way as uh, with my Android Studio uh, on my own machine. So as you can see, when I try to press now Command plus uh, V to paste this uh, code, some different kind of a drop-down panel here will open up. So, so I think that there is some kind of a conflict between the, the shortcuts that I'm using here and the shortcuts that uh, are applied to the web browser. So at this point, uh, I'm not really sure if uh, we do need to configure something to make this uh, whole uh, ID uh, faster, but at the moment uh, it's uh, quite slow. However, uh, what uh, I think that could be useful here to have is the Xcode environment in the uh, cloud. So uh, most of developers that are actually using Windows machines, uh, they cannot use the Xcode environment on their own uh, computer, which is why I think that it would be beneficial uh, to have that um, kind of a feature to access the Xcode in the cloud uh, instead of the Android Studio, but that's just my opinion. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who will find this uh, quite useful nonetheless. And uh, now I'm going to go back to that um, Firebase uh, Studio dashboard so that we can test out uh, that other uh, logic for uh, building the application with the AI agent. So let's here type studio.firebase.com .google.com and uh, here, um, let's say, for example, I want to uh, create a, a simple to-do application that um, will uh, include user authentication as well as a Firebase a Firestore database. Each uh, task should uh, have the following fields. And we can now declare here, for example, the ID, the title, description, uh, priority, then a date, and so on. We can describe some more features here. For example, each uh, user uh, should have an uh, option to uh, create, read, update, and delete uh, its uh, own tasks. And that's it. So let's click now uh, prototype with AI to see uh, what kind of a result that we're going to get. So uh, the AI at the moment uh, will basically uh, create the web applications. So currently it doesn't support uh, mobile development, or I think that it doesn't. So uh, as you can see, we are here using the Gemini uh, AI. And this is the app uh, blueprint, right? So we can modify this uh, blueprint, just click this uh, little uh, edit icon. We can even change here the name to something different. For example, uh, to do. Uh, its uh, core features are also listed here. So user authentication, user authentication using uh, next uh, old JS. So I'm not that familiar with uh, uh, web uh, APIs and stuff, but I'm assuming this is the most uh, used way of uh, implementing the authentication in your application. So we have a task creation form, so a clean user interface for creating new tasks. Okay, so that uh, looks uh, great. We can even uh, add here one more uh, statement and say uh, each uh, priority level should be tied to a specific uh, color. And we can say, for example, a red, a high, yellow, medium, and green, low. And for everything else, we can uh, leave it like that. We can also customize the colors for this application. So at the moment, I will choose this default color palette. So green and uh, blue. And let's click Save. So after that, we can now uh, wait until this uh, whole uh, project uh, is uh, being built. So let's press this button. 
And uh, now we are watching until the AI agent is uh, building a whole web application for us. The great thing about this um, Firebase Studio is that uh, it's also connected with the Firebase console, so it means that we can uh, directly use uh, Firebase hosting to, uh, to host our uh, web application. We can use a Firebase authentication and all other its uh, features uh, for our project that we are building here with NAI. We also have an option to, of course, uh, switch to the code and actually access this uh, whole uh, generated code from the from the uh, Visual Studio thing. So I haven't worked with the Visual Studio that much, but anyhow, for web developers, it's uh, definitely a good choice. And we can also see the web browser uh, with our actual application. So this is the to-do list. We have a test, description, uh, priority level. So we have a, a high, medium, and a low. Uh, so uh, I don't see any color here connected with those um, priority levels, even though I have specified that explicitly. We also have some default um, tasks uh, that were added here by default, I think. We have an option to create here our own. So let's here specify uh, hello world, description uh, hello there, priority low. Let's click here create task. So the task has been created successfully. We have received that. Uh, message, but I still don't see that um, that uh, new item here appearing in this list. We can now try to maybe refresh this page, I don't know. So now, uh, we also have here one issue. Uh, hydration failed because the server rendered HTML didn't match the client, so uh, I'm not sure why. Okay, so it appears that your app needs a Gemini API key, so let's click uh, auto-generate. Bottom line, I'm not a web developer uh, using those technologies like uh, HTML, CSS, uh, Next.js, and other different frameworks. But I just wanted to test out and see uh, how good the Firebase Studio is uh, in creating those uh, applications for the web. So it's a great idea that you can um, see your whole project right here and that you can deploy it with basically one click on your Firebase. So that uh, really sounds uh, interesting and uh, to be honest, it's a great feature nonetheless. Okay, so we have updated our first uh, Gemini API key. We can also press this uh, button to switch to the code and actually uh, edit this uh, whole application. So as I said, I'm not that familiar with this uh, whole uh, uh, Visual Studio and this environment, but nonetheless, you can access, for example, the source code and uh, just uh, check out all those uh, stuff that this uh, AI was uh, generating. We can also switch back to our uh, prototyper. Or we can use the Gemini uh, right here uh, in this ID as well. So it's really uh, one nice feature. Uh, we still have that little issue that uh, we have seen. Okay, so we uh, we are prompted that we can fix this issue or allow the Gemini to fix this issue for us. Let's click that. And at the moment, the Gemini is uh, trying to fix this uh, issue that we have encountered. It's adding some code uh, on its own. And uh, right now... Uh, I don't see that issue anymore, but okay, so I actually see that. So it uh, wasn't fixed uh, at all. I'm not sure why, so maybe it doesn't work or maybe I need to configure something else. Uh, I don't know, but as I said, I'm not a uh, native web developer, so I'm not going to stick with this too much. Obviously, uh, the Firebase Studio um, needs some uh, more work when it comes to the AI and when it comes to this uh, Android Studio in the cloud. The biggest drawback for me is the, the performance of this Android Studio, so it's quite slow, to be honest. But also, as I already mentioned, there are definitely people who, uh, who are going to use this. And um, uh, let me know in the comment section down below if uh, you would like to use this uh, Android Studio in the cloud, even though its performance currently is not that high. So be sure to share your honest opinion about it. Also, don't forget to leave a like to this video, but uh, only if you find it helpful. And uh, thank you for watching.